Big Mishinabe and Wild Beast, you know, yeah. He wants to talk to you. This is JP Rayford, Babette Salmon, and Makabe Miguan in Chicago. And there was Bawacha Gaywin, your dream about the dresses. Sorry about that. Can we stand for a moment? Yeah. Okay. We can walk and talk. Yeah, let's walk and talk. You'll hear my jingles. <laughs> um, well, my name is Babette Salmon, and I grew up here. And um, have you ever heard of the first street scene of uh, all the native people that used to hang out in the down here downtown and drink and uh, and still do? We're on first street right now. Yes, back in the, the 70s, I was I was 16 years old, and when I wanted to find my dad, I just went in the alleys because um, that's where he drank. And a lot of people drank. And from the outside, people didn't like it. They didn't like the native people, you know. But from the inside, it was like a big family. When I would hang out with him, they would appoint a one right, you know, one man just to watch over me because I was only 15. And he would be in a distance. They always made sure each other was fed. So there was a thread of traditional. You know, they knew traditions, but they were drinking a lot. But they still kept that family feeling, tribal feeling. I liked hanging out with him. But that's where I had to find him, with his big family in the, in the alley. And he passed away some years back. The other day, a few weeks back, I was I needed to turn around. And um, I went through the alley, and I was having all these memories of meeting my dad there and hanging out with him and that week I had a dream that all the jingle dress dancers were in the alleys bringing the healing and I think there's people in the alleys that are crying out for help and the creator heard them and that was the message sent back to us was you need to dance the jingle dresses down here and bring the healing and start the healing new boom today What does this mean that you are here and there's maybe a dozen other women and girls with jingle dress dances right now? Well, what it means is that they heard the dream. They believe in our dream world. And when they heard that, they decided to be part of the healing. Eventually there will probably be a lot of jingle dress dancers down here to continue bringing the healing. The spirits... Because it came from a dream world, and the dream world that's always, it's always about a dream. How does it feel to be given the gift, as you say, of this dream? It's like a comfortable circle condition my dad was in and all the people he was with. And, you know, a lot of Native people. He said they would live underneath the, the city in the steam pipes in the winter time to keep warm. And it's like a painful circle. Who would think someday his daughter would grow up and think of him this way and wear her jingle dress for him and um, all the others in the alley. Do you believe your father, other relatives are seeing you dancing? Yes. Yes. So very happy today, very loving, bringing our community together. We're proud too that our mayor came out to support us. You mentioned uh, being a teenager in this city and uh, how hard things can be. And we're hearing a lot, we have a parallel sort of campaign going on right now about girl, women and girls trafficking. And a lot of our girls are trafficked around that time. Is that? Is that something that you were aware of at that time? Yes. Um, the boats. I knew a lot of women, young women that were going to the boats. And I didn't know what the boats were. Uh -huh. So I asked if I could go with. I was thinking of it as love boat. I know that really sounds stupid, but it sounded kind of fun there, getting all dressed up. I was horrified what it really was. Uh -huh. and, I was able to get out of there, but I was really scared. 
It could have happened that fast. I was only 19 then. And uh, I'm lucky to have gotten out of there. But I know some were already in the trap. What can we do today to keep these girls and the young boys away away from that that well, cycle, I guess some would say? Well, we need to come back to our traditional ways where we're um, teaching, doing the women teachings. Here's my little Wintons right here. She's 10 years old now. And she's a girl. Someday she'll be, become a woman. And when she is, I'm gonna be there for her. When she becomes a woman and she's gonna receive all those women teachings. And she'll spend a year in those teachings. And she'll know who she is. And that's what, what I think is gonna help a lot is bringing those women teachings back to what it's like, what is it to be a woman today? You know, we're, we're not for being exploited like that. We're not for sale. And she's not for sale. She's my girl. This is a very powerful time for you right now. We're, we gotta be protecting our girls. You know. This movement, uh, by all accounts, has been sort of led by women, and, and that, I guess, includes this dance today. Mm -hmm. Is that traditional for the women, including the older women, to be leading in Anishinaabe ways? To be leading? Uh, well, it depends upon what your definition of leading is, because we we have a whole different definition of you know leading. What is that? Uh, but right now, what we're all saying here is none of us are leaders. We're all teachers. We're all learners. We're all leading, we're all following, we're following our hearts. And right now this is such a pure moment because we seem to just be following our hearts and we do have some people that speak, you know, like to do the media or, um, but yeah, us women, we're, we're definitely acknowledged as leaders, but not in the dominant world, world view of that, you know. <laughs> Who's this here? Have her put her down and then put yours on top.